Hi, I'm Amber and this is my next hobby. We're in a brand new year now. 2020 was terrible. We're kicking off 2021 and I wanted to share one of my favorite parts of, you know, starting the new year, which is setting up my new bullet journal. This is my third year keeping a bullet journal. Um, my use has kind of evolved, my page layouts, all that fun stuff. So I kind of wanted to share my process and show you what I'm doing for the year. Just to head things off right now, I do not have one of those like beautiful like bullet journals that you see all over the internet with like inspirational quotes and like beautiful drawings and paintings and all that stuff. I do not have that. My bullet journaling is very, very practical. I wouldn't call it minimalist because I do tend to have like a lot of crap going on on the pages, but like it's not pretty. I would call it kind of ugly, but it's very useful for me. And I found like it works really well for me in terms of like using it as a planner. I always love like stationery and notebooks and planners and stuff like that, except like usually I get past January and I abandon it. And with bullet journal, I have found that I don't I actually stick with it through a whole year which is really exciting for me so this is gonna be a three-part video part one I will take you through my 2020 bullet journal part two I will take you through the setup of my first couple 2021 kind of the front part of my bullet journal and then part three I will take you through my January calendar pages and kind of the first couple of pages of the weekly spreads that I'm doing there. I'll have timestamps down below so you can kind of click around depending on what you're interested in. I don't go through everything I'm doing just because like I said since this is a very practical thing for me my like week to week things aren't changing a ton so I'm going to skip through a bunch with the 2020 stuff plus as I'm laying out the 2021 January pages I'm not going to show you everything I make because it's all going to look the same because I use this as a planner so I hope you enjoy you know if you're kind of a person who's been intimidated to try and start a bullet journal because you're like I can't draw I can't do art like why would I even do this it's definitely my favorite way to like keep track of things like it makes an excellent planner so if that's more your interest definitely give this a watch and you know give it a try I will also include links down below for all like I've got like washi tapes and different markers highlighters all that stuff I will link down below so you can find that if you want to get started. Uh, so let's go ahead to past me where you'll see me start flipping through stuff and check it out. Let's start by looking back at my 2020 journal. Uh, first up, we're going to have my index. Uh, as you can see, I stopped updating it in like April. I definitely want to use an index again, but instead of having to number my pages, I'm going to be using washi tape to mark and differentiate each section. Next I have a list of recurring bills. I really liked having this and will definitely keep it in my next journal. I'll also be adding a tracker to keep a log of when things have been paid as well. After that we have my future log. Uh, nothing too exciting here. Everything got cancelled because COVID. Uh, here are two pages that I really liked. My yearly goals is always nice to have, uh, even if this year I didn't accomplish too much. I bought these dorky stickers and only used them like twice in the whole journal. Uh, then I have my time off tracker, which I also really liked, though I ran out of room to list all my days off, so I'll definitely need to adjust that for 2021. Then we get into my January pages. Uh, this is kind of the weekly layout I kept for most of the year, even though it definitely stopped being useful pretty early on. I've got these big spaces for each day of the week and some weekly daily tracking as well on the right hand side. Next is a little one off section where I listed ingredients for some of my favorite recipes so that I could easily refer to them when making grocery lists, except I basically never referred to this after making it. So it was definitely kind of a waste. Here's where my weekly pages kind of started to change a little bit in March. This was when we started working from home as the pandemic sort of picked up in the United States. I updated my tracking section and gave myself a larger shopping list area. Here I switched to scheduling hourly tasks for work because I was trying to adjust to working from home. This kind of helped, but ultimately I kind of overscheduled myself and didn't keep up with this too long. Uh, I also had a lot of additional daily tracking to help keep myself motivated while being home all the time. I kind of also overcommitted here, so again, this wasn't the best call on my part. Here's another little change I made to try and get this page layout to work for me where I started giving myself specific daily tasks for each day. Uh, I also started planning meals in each daily box and logging what time I woke up for the day. I still had an abundance of daily tasks and just kind of gave myself an open notes section for whatever I needed. 
Here we have yet another one-off section that I should have known I wouldn't actually use. I was planning to keep care guides for all my house plants here. Ultimately, I wrote down info for three of them and never looked at this again. In August, I added these symbols to my calendar pages to track when my plants were watered. I've got a key to the side and then I just put the symbol on whatever days the plants were watered. I really liked having this on a regular spread versus uh, something separate that I'll never actually remember to look at. So I'll definitely be keeping this in 2021. This is basically the last month I used this particular layout. I've still got my big daily tracker, which I kept forgetting to update on weekends. And I also added a little meal planning section as well. Finally, we get to September when I realized these page layouts were hot garbage and I needed something different. So after partially filling out the spreads, I wound up redrawing the entire month of September with this new page layout that I was really happy with. Instead of those big empty sections, I've got individual columns for tracking work, personal and video stuff that makes things much more manageable. I've got a limited amount of space so I can't overcommit myself. I also added habit tracking to just Monday through Friday since I never remember to update it on the weekends anyway. Uh, for Saturday and Sunday, I left myself with uh, some extra space to be able to fit in any stuff I wanted to get done. I also split this bottom section into a few different parts. I switched to just tracking dinners because basically I just kind of rummage around in the fridge like a raccoon for lunches, so it didn't really make sense to try and plan for that. I also gave myself a few project tracking areas and a little spot for a grocery list. Here's just a big idea page for YouTube projects. I'm definitely keeping this for 2021 and I'll move some of these ideas over. Getting into October, I started including the last few days before and after the month that would fit into my spread just to give me a better overview of what's going on. You can also see I added a bunch of new house plants and also crossed one off, RIP to that prayer plant that mealybugs destroyed. And now we jump to the end of the year. This was the final spread I was using and I'll be using kind of a variation of it for my 2021 January pages. Uh, I'm still really liking these columns so those will definitely be around for a while. I'll be making some tweaks to this little side section though. Lastly, we have this little content calendar I set up after we started making our videos. Uh, once something is scheduled, I write it in the journal, but until it's confirmed, I use post-it notes so I can kind of move things around easily. I'm definitely going to be making an updated version of this in my new journal that should hopefully have enough space so that I can plan for the entire year. I still have some empty pages in this journal, but I really like starting each year fresh, so let's move on to my 2021 notebook. New notebook time. Jake got me these really cute Orville Peck stickers, so I stuck this one on the cover. As far as supplies go, I've got my dotted notebook from Michaels, a bunch of washi tape, some highlighters and markers, colored pencils that I didn't actually use, a bone folder, and ruler. Like I said before, this is not a pretty bullet journal, so this is about the standard of handwriting you can expect from me. This is gonna be my index. I'm not filling this out yet until I've actually put my pages together. Now I'm just going to go through and number the squares on this page so I don't have to like go and count every time I forget how many squares there are. I know some people do more intense like grids and stuff, but I don't really need anything like that so I'm just going to keep it simple. I also don't use a key at all like with the traditional bullet journal method. I just found I never really used it and I just kind of use my own symbols. So up front I want to put some of the more important pages that I'll be referring to regularly starting with bill tracking. I'm using some washi tape to mark each little page or section. I'll then use that same tape in the index to mark like which each page is. Here I'm just drawing out a little tracker to mark when a bill needs paid each month and then beneath that I'll be putting a list of due dates on any bills or credit cards or whatever. Uh, I kind of forgot how terrible drawing these first few pages are just because the binding is super uncooperative. I'm just putting the months of the year down there. I 
and then I need to actually look up the dates my bills are due so I can write those down. Next we have my future log. I decided to get a little fancy this year and do a Dutch door for these pages with all the months on them so they could all sit under like a 2021 overview header along with the bill tracking and time off spreads that'll be in the front and back. Uh, so I just used some cardboard and an X-Acto knife to trim off this top section and it turned out pretty well. I also decided to switch to columns instead of rows for my uh, for each month in the future log this year. Here's me having a crisis over already screwing up and leaving out the month of March, but in my defense, March last year wasn't exactly great, so why not skip it? Uh, I just used some washi tape to hide my sins and wrote out the months underneath instead. I've also realized I rotate my journal a whole lot while working on it, so sorry that this is kind of chaotic to watch. I don't know how other people do such like nice, neat layout videos. So then I went ahead and added my little section header for 2021 overview. And then I realized I should probably actually finish a spread before jumping forward to something else based on what like marker or whatever I'm using. So I went back to my bill tracker and put in some highlighter just to make my tracker a little bit easier to read. With that done, I moved on to my PTO slash holiday spread. I uh, slap a little more washi tape on there to make it fancy. And then I just drew out some grids so I could track what days I wanted to take off and what holidays I get. Uh, and like when I've submitted stuff and when it's scheduled with work, uh, I'm still waiting on the list of company-wide holidays for the year, so I couldn't actually fill this spread out yet. There's my face making a little guest appearance. It was hard trying to do all this and not fully block the camera. Uh, here I'm just adding some highlighter to make the page a little easier to read. I realized the highlighter and marker combo kind of smear, which is why I'm not just dragging it straight across the page and doing it section by section. And then I added yet more washi tape. Next up is my 2021 goals pages, which I will be using this cute little purple washi tape on. I've got two separate pages. One is going to be for personal goals and one is for professional goals. I'm not actually going to fill these out on camera though, just because I felt weird about doing that.
Next up is just another sort of big open page layout. Uh, this is for sort of my YouTube uh, video project ideas. I'm just gonna stick some blue washi tape up there, write out a header, and that's really it. Plus some more tape. Okay, now for the content calendar. This one is gonna be like a million little boxes, so it's gonna take a while to get fully drawn. Uh, even though there are like a million calendar type apps for tracking this sort of stuff, I just really prefer being able to manage it in like a physical form. Once a video is scheduled, I'll like write the name of it in the box for that week. Uh, until then, I'm gonna keep the ideas on post-it notes. That way I can kind of shuffle things around, uh, keep it flexible in case things change, you know, other stuff gets wrapped up early or we're behind on something, so. There's one page done, just two more to go. I made 54 boxes in total, so I've got just over a year's worth of space for planning all of our video content. These first few pages went fine, but when I get to the last one, you'll see that I definitely screwed up the alignment on that because I was tracing the like bleed through of the previous page, which threw things off by a square, but it was totally fine, it wasn't that big of a deal. And there's my big dumb head again. Also, I definitely kept like bumping the camera with my head at this point, so sorry about being a little shaky. Now that those pages are done, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of highlighting like in and around each of these boxes, just to make it a little bit easier to match the date with the appropriate space, just because I've kind of got so much packed in here. Uh, I dated each week as the Monday that it starts on. And 
and I did some alternating colors just again to try and make it a little easier to visually process while I was looking at it. Like I said, I screwed up a little with the alignment on this last page, but it works totally fine. Then I just titled it and I also stuck the date range at the top of the page so if I'm trying to schedule something I can just really quickly glance to see what's included on each page. And what is a bullet journal if without more washi tape? Uh, then finally I added one last page just for unscheduled projects, that way we don't lose any track of videos that we have in the works, but we don't know when we want to put them out yet. Finally, before getting into my January spread, I added a little social media tracker so I could kind of keep track of how our accounts are doing throughout the First, I added this little gridded section up top to keep track of like the number of followers or subscribers that we have on various accounts, including the My Next Hobby stuff as well as some of my personal ones. Use the highlighter again just to kind of differentiate the lines and make it a little cleaner to look at. Then below that, I went ahead and added a couple additional boxes that I'm going to be using to track some other data from YouTube and Instagram.
And then finally underneath all that, I added a section to put some values from 2020, just so I kind of had a point of reference as we move through forward through the year. Now we're gonna get into my January spreads. I decided to downsize to a single page calendar just because I realized I didn't actually need two pages just based on how much I was actually using it and how much I was putting on each square. So I went ahead and just drew out my little calendar grid. And then I covered that baby with some more washi tape. I'm leaving this bottom section open for now. Uh, I think I might do some sort of notes or tracking or something in there, but I haven't decided what to do at this point. So it's blank while I, it was blank while I was filming this. Now let's go ahead and make some weekly spreads. I switched from the four column layout for Monday through Friday to a three column one, and you will see why shortly. I went ahead and drew all those Monday through Friday sections first. I like to do a whole month at a time instead of a week. Future, I think if I had to do like a new weekly spread every single week, I probably wouldn't have stuck with bullet journaling the way I have. So now that all those are drawn, starting with the second weekly spread, I'm going to fold over that like blank first column. This is because in the first weekly spread, I'm going to be using that empty column as a month long habit tracker. So with these uh, edges folded over, I have constant access to that no matter what week I'm in. This way I remember to keep filling out and I would have to keep flipping back and forth to access it. Initially, I thought about cutting off those first columns, but ultimately I thought it'd be kind of useful to have that extra little hidden flap to put additional information on. Next, I'm drawing out my Saturday and Sunday boxes, as well as a few other little sections underneath. Because these columns are narrower with that last column being removed, I made them a little bit longer so they take up proportionally more of the visible page.
Uh, then I just went ahead and added some highlighter and some more washi tape as well. I numbered my dates, added some colored column headers, and uh, stuck in some labels for the dinners, uh, notes, and the upcoming video project sections. After I did that, I wanted to fill out the right hand column on the last page of my January spread so that I would also have constant access to the information stored there. I also turned this first little flap into a to-do list that I could really easily unfold and reference. Since I downsized my monthly calendar, I put my plant watering symbols on this page so I can just use those in the weekly spreads to track when those have last been watered. I will also be adding a list of any important dates that I want to reference through the entire month so that I have that information at a glance. That's it for my bullet journaling video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I might think about doing this on a monthly basis. Like I said, my spreads don't change a ton, but it could be interesting to share like how my stuff evolves depending on how much I'm using it and what I realize isn't working for me. So we'll see. If you'd be interested in more bullet journaling videos, definitely comment down below to let me know. I'd be happy to share more, but you know, kind of want to gauge the interest on that. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That means so much to us. You know, we hit our first 100 subscribers right before the end of the year, and we're so excited to see what happens in 2021. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.